Σύντροφοι και συντρόφισσες, αγαπητέ Μιχάλη, ευχαριστούμε για την φιλοξενία σου εδώ. Φίλες και φίλοι από τον αραβικό κόσμο, αγαπητέ Λουίς, ήθελα να σας καλωσορίσω όλους στην Ελλάδα, να σας καλωσορίσω εδώ στην όμορφη Κρήτη. Ευχαριστώ θερμά για τη συμμετοχή σας. Είναι η πρώτη συνάντηση της ειδική Επιτροπής της Σοσιαλιστικής Διεθνούς για τον αραβικό κόσμο. Δημιουργήθηκε αυτή η Επιτροπή πρόσφατα στην Αθήνα με απόφαση του Συμβουλίου της οργάνωσής μας τον περασμένο Ιούλιο. Γιατί για μας η Αραβική Άνοιξη, για σας, για όλους μας, άλλαξε η Αραβική Άνοιξη καθοριστικά το τοπίο στην ευρύτερη περιοχή της Μέσης Ανατολής και της Βορείου Αφρικής. Μετέφερε σε όλη την Ιφίλιο ένα ισχυρό μήνυμα για περισσότερη δημοκρατία, συμμετοχή, για περισσότερη δικαιοσύνη. Είναι ένα μήνυμα που το καταλαβαίνουμε ιδιαίτερα στην Ελλάδα, ειδικά για ιστορικούς λόγους. Είναι ένα μήνυμα που αγγίζει ιδιαίτερα τους πολίτες της Κρήτης, που έχουν πρωταγωνιστήσει σε πολλούς αγώνες για την ελευθερία. Και στο σημείο αυτό θέλω να, πω, να σας πω ότι για μας σήμερα είναι μια συμβολική μέρα. Είναι η επέτειος της 28ης Οκτωβρίου του 1940, όταν είπαμε όχι στον φασισμό και τον ναζισμό και συμβολίζει την αντίσταση απέναντι σε κάθε είδους καταπίεσης, σε κάθε είδους αυταρχισμού και επιβολής. Και με την ευκαιρία θέλω να επισημάνω ότι αυταρχισμός είναι και η προσπάθεια κάποιων να επιβάλλουν απόψεις, ακόμα και διακόπτοντες εθνικές παρελάσεις, την ώρα που χιλιάδες παιδιά, πολίτες και οικογένειες τιμούν σε όλη τη χώρα με υπερηφάνεια τον εθνικό μας αγώνα για την επελευθέρωση. Αυταρχισμός είναι όταν κάποιοι ελάχιστοι επιλέγουν να προσβάλλουν τις εκδηλώσεις τιμής στους αγώνες για την ελευθερία της πατρίδας, ακόμα και τον ίδιο τον πρόεδρο της Δημοκρατίας, Αυταρχισμός είναι να θέλουν να διαιρούν το λαό σε εθνικόφρονες και μη. Και το σύνολο της ελληνικής κοινωνίας καταδικάζει αυτές τις ακραίες συμπεριφορές. Διότι αυτές οι συμπεριφορές δεν τραυματίζουν κάποιους αντιπάλους, τραυματίζουν βαθιά τις δημοκρατικές μας παραδόσεις και το δημοκρατικό ήθος του λαού μας. Θέλω να... Σας πω ότι ως Ελλάδα έχουμε διαχρονικά στενές ιστορικές σχέσεις με τους λαούς της περιοχής. Και βεβαίως η Κρήτη γεωγραφικά βρίσκεται στο σταυροδρόμι που ενώνει την Ευρώπη με τον Αραβικό κόσμο. Η χρονική συγκυρία της συνάντησής μας είναι επίσης σημαντική, γιατί η Αραβική Άνοιξη βρίσκεται σε μια κρίσιμη φάση. Έχουν γίνει πολλά θετικά βήματα. Υπάρχουν όμως και αβεβαιότητες για το μέλλον. Εμείς θα σταθούμε δίπλα σας ως σοσιαλιστική διεθνής, δίπλα στους πολίτες του αραβικού κόσμου που μάχονται για ένα καλύτερο μέλλον. Και προσβλέπουμε στον διάλογο τη συνεργασία με τις δημοκρατικές δυνάμεις και τις νέες κυβερνήσεις που θα προκύψουν ώστε η Αραβική Άνοιξη να δημιουργήσει προοπτικές για τους νέους που πρωταγωνιστούν σε αυτό το κίνημα. Μια Αραβική Άνοιξη που θα δημιουργήσει και νέες προοπτικές συνεργασίας σε όλη την περιοχή της Μεσογείου. Let me continue in English and again welcome you to Greece and to beautiful Crete. In light of the recent dramatic events in our area, the Arab Spring, uh, we wanted to develop this committee, but I wanted to say a few words of why we are here. What brings us together? How do we see our cooperation? Obviously, we are in this region, we live in this region, but I think there is much more that brings us together. I'd like to begin with the word respect. I want to use the word respect for many reasons. First of all, because I believe our movements are based on a deep-rooted need for a sense of justice, a sense of, a sense of decency, and respect for our fellow human beings. Many of us in this room have suffered oppression, inequality, injustices, even humiliation of our personalities by authoritarian regimes or authoritarian thinking 
and practices. So ours is a common goal for respect and humanism for each and every individual. Secondly, the word respect comes from a deep appreciation we have towards the Arab youth, women, and new political forces that are attempting to change their countries and societies through the Arab Spring. They have brought a newfound hope, vigor, energy, and pride. And this has welcomed the world around, but even more so in our movement, because we know what this means. We know the difficulties. We know what challenges you have faced and what challenges lie ahead, because many of us have gone through similar histories, similar experiences. Personally, I grew up and lived through a dictatorship and the struggle for democracy and self-respect for our country in Greece was part of my struggle. But so many of our parties have been born through the struggles of people, the common citizen, the younger generation, the women, the middle and working class, the farmer who asked for a better life, but first and foremost asked for freedom and respect. So when I use the word respect, it is with a deep understanding and solidarity concerning the difficulties you face in changing your societies. But this brings me to a third point on respect. We can help, but you in the end will take the difficult decisions. And this is both right and responsible. Outsiders have too often tried to impose their beliefs and their ways. I know this in our history in Greece, but you know this well, you know this well in the Arab world vis-a-vis -vis the West, which was not always identified with democratic forces and institutions. Cold wars or wars on terrorism often became the smokescreen to hide the real nature of regimes, policies, even alliances. That is why this path to change must be your path. It is your ownership. It is your destiny you are shaping. But on the other hand, we are here to help. First, because we believe in you. We believe in your people's capacity. But secondly, because we can, lend, we can lend you our experience. And there is much and great experience from around the world in this movement, from Latin America to Africa, from Asia to Europe. But thirdly, because we hope you find the values of our family, representative values, and ones that are universal and just. Yes, we all have our cultures. We all have our traditions and histories. But we also believe we are united, united first by the common problems humanity is facing today. Today it is the global financial crisis, which Greece is also living through. But there are many more issues, global warming and environment, poverty and migration, conflicts, wars, the Middle East problem, the Palestinian issue. But how we tackle these issues differs. It is very different to save the banks at the expense of the taxpayer than it is to save the banks and cut the bonuses and the huge profits that are made for the few. It is very different to deal with migration through racist behavior and it is very different to deal with migration by looking with respect at the human side of the problem how we solve it, not how we create more fear, how we empower our people to be part of the solution, to own the solutions, to have a voice and participate in the solutions, to make sure their interests are heard in any solution, rather than creating fear, rather than pushing people into submission or pushing them to look for authoritarian solutions, violent and absolutist solutions, or, or, or violent and absolutist leaders. So our movement is also united in the values we represent on how we see our people, our citizens, their capacities, their hopes, 
but also their involvement, their participation in decision making, and how we make sure our institutions, our democratic institutions, create the protection of rights, respect for human and for social rights. We are a deeply democratic movement because we believe in the capacity of all human beings to develop their own capacities, their own aspirations to the fullest extent. That is why, while respecting our special cultures, we believe that concepts such as democracy transcend these cultures. Democracy, first of all, is not a Western concept, nor is it a religious concept. It is an ancient concept that sprang from this region itself, under the influence of so many cultures of the Mediterranean. As we believe in human beings, we could not accept that different religions or different genders mean that our basic values are not valid for some, but are valid for others. For example, we believe in the capacity of women, whether they are Christian, whether they are Muslim, whether they are Hindu, Buddhist, we believe in their capacity. That is why we stand for equality, and that is why we stand for the freedom they are entitled to. So as we respect and believe in the richness, because there is a richness in the great diversity in our world, we also believe in a foundation of values that allows us to coexist in a way that makes, makes reality this respect of each human personality and each tradition and special culture. So during the last year, we witnessed, we witnessed this watershed, these watershed events of the Arab Spring. They've changed and they're changing the region. That's why we created this special committee in order that we can support this democratic change and support the existing but also new political actors that are fighting for a democratic society and respect of human rights and social justice. Societies and citizens across the region and all over the world are taking a stand. They are asking for more democracy, more participation, more transparency, more social justice. And I think the Arab Spring has strengthened this new debate worldwide about how our political parties should be organized and what, are the, their role, what their role is in our modern societies. Civic action has become the focus of attention. And the Arab Spring has widened the public space has offered greater scope for dialogue, debate, exchange of ideas and experiences. Women, the younger generation, but also the older generation of people that always wanted and fought for democracy have become pioneers for change, championing greater democratization. Also, social media have been instrumental. Social media have provided new tools to break rigid practices, the, the clampdown on voices, uh, and the authoritarianism of the past has given more space for dialogue and freedom of speech, gave a voice to many in the silent majority. So I'm also pleased that today we have with us several social media activists that um, come from a number of countries in the region. So I welcome you also all. I welcome you all here. I'm certain you will contribute also to the understanding of the changes that are underway, but also help us frame the necessary policy proposals to support these changes. But today the yearning for democracy goes way beyond the Arab world. It's a global demand and uh, we've learned a big lesson from the Arab Spring worldwide. We have voices coming from the streets and the squares around the world, whether it's Tahrir Square, whether it's Wall Street, or even in Greece. The Socialist International has always been on the side of those who fight for a fair global governance system and for a fair financial system. And we have taken initiatives to ensure that these voices are heard and their demands met. That is why the Socialist International has made the reform of global governance and the global financial system a key priority, shared by many of those demonstrating on Wall Street, but also on so many other major cities. Because these demonstrations, uh, I would say, uh, express something which I think is wider. It's not simply that we need to change our own homes and societies and countries. We need to change a much wider society, which is now our global, our global village. I feel this very much from 
my experience the past two years in Greece fa uh, facing this very difficult financial crisis and situation, both in Greece and in Europe. We cannot fight injustice only in our societies, only in our nations, because the global economic system has created huge inequalities, both between our societies, but also between our peoples on the one hand, and a global class of rich and powerful, global class of rich and powerful that avoid the laws, avoid taxes, concentrate power, concentrate media power way beyond any possible democratic control. This is why the change of the financial system is central to our goals. The Arab Spring has triggered a dramatic turnaround in the regional status quo. But one other lesson which we know very well from our struggles, but you are seeing now more and more, these trends are not irreversible. Many um, impediments can come up. So we need to see how we can help this process. It will not necessarily be smooth, but it must move forward. Uh, we must be ready to tackle emerging, cha emerging challenges and make sure that there are no efforts to divert your path to democracy to help you keep walking forward with the citizens in the forefront. And there are, of course, very in important unfolding events in the, um, in the region that have created real hope for parliamentary democracy in the Arab world. We need to take initiatives, and that is what we want to do through this committee. We want to help in a constructive way with uh, many political movements, new and old, that want to fight for democracy, but also help civil society and activists. We are listening to their voices. We share the same principles of democracy and social justice. But before I finish and give the floor to you, let me take this opportunity to congratulate the Tunisian people for casting their votes. This is a very important, very important responsibility and right to be able to cast your vote. Um, and they did so in large numbers during Tunisia's first democratic election on October 23rd. There was unprecedented participation, and it was done in a peaceful and orderly manner under which the election took place, and this demonstrates the Tunisian people's yearning, I would say even maturity, for democracy, freedom, and human rights. We hope that elections in Egypt next November will also be a successful democratic exercise. At the end of November, there will also be elections in Morocco. So I want to wish to our sister party a very positive result. Today and tomorrow, tomorrow, we'll have an opportunity to discuss in depth the challenges ahead. This is the first meeting of the committee, so it will be very useful to hear your ideas and suggestions. And I look forward to working with you both as a member of the Socialist International, but also as a citizen of the region. We in the Mediterranean, uh, North Africa, the Arab world, Southern Europe have much in common, but we have been also isolated with, by many barriers. One of the barriers was the lack of democracy, which many of our countries have suffered over decades. And now is a time where we can bring our peoples together, and I think this will be for the better of, uh, of not only our common uh, understanding, but uh, to make our economies more prosperous, uh, make this beautiful diversity again, uh, a richness from which the world has learned over the many centuries from ancient times. We need to bring this back, this great richness and diversity in the Mediterranean and, um, and use this again as uh, to the benefit of our peoples. Thank you very much and again, welcome.